What's going on, everybody? Rob Doster here from the Field of 68. And today we're going to bring you another episode in our NBA Draft Prospect Profile Series. These are going to be dropping throughout May and throughout June, a couple a day. So if you do like this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and do hit that like button. Anything that you can do to interact with these videos, it really does help the channel. It helps more people like you find this content. And since I have you here, make sure you check out our Instagram and TikTok pages. We are going to be pumping out more unique content over there throughout the spring and the summer heading into the 2022-23 college basketball season. Like, for example, did you know that Penny Hardaway was shot when he was in college? I didn't know that. You can find that story right now live on our TikTok and Instagram pages. The links for those are in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into another Field of 68 NBA Draft Prospect Profile. Welcome back to another edition of the Field of 68's NBA Draft Scouting Reports. My name is Rob Doss. I have Terrence Oglesby here with me today, and we are going to be breaking down Duke wing A.J. Griffin's game. Griffin is coming off a season where he averaged 10.4 points, 3.9 boards, and shot nearly 45% from the three-point line while uh, attempting more than four uh, threes per game. He's 6'7". He's a switchable defender. He has great length. Uh, T.O., talk to me a little bit about what this guy does well. I love the way that AJ Griffin approaches the game. One is they have a lot of they had a lot of top tire individual scores on that Duke team this year, and he was willing to play around some guys, and that provides value at the NBA level. Not to mention, like you said, above forty five percent from three. You want to talk about something that is put at a precedent when teams are looking at potential players for the rotation for their immediate help guys. He's a guy who does that at a high level. He can really shoot the basketball. And he makes the game look easy. He doesn't force things. He can play off of better players, which is something with value, especially when you're drafting in the late lottery, in the mid to late lottery, which is where he's projected. He's somebody that can come in. And because of his said length, like you said, seven foot wingspan, six, seven, big, strong body. He's going to be a switchable defender at the NBA level. He's going to have to clean some things up, but the tools are there for the young man from Duke. I, I think that he is one of the higher floor prospects in this draft simply because you can kind of plug and play him right now. You can really envision what he's going to end up being at the pro level. You know, when you're six, seven, when you have a seven foot wingspan, when you shoot that well from three, I mean, teams are looking for players specifically like that. Now, here's my question. And, and I, I think his strengths are fairly obvious, right? Like he might be the best catch and shoot guy in this draft class, especially at that size. Um, I'm more interested in kind of like the the weaknesses or the flaws or the places where we can see upside in this game. Um, so let, let's start with this. My biggest question is what he's going to be offensively, right? Like I thought he was going to have a little bit more burst and be a little bit more athletic than he was. I think part of that is uh, he missed uh, a couple of years in high school with injuries. He missed the start of the season with a knee issue. Um, he didn't really get going until kind of the mid to late part of the ACC game. So is he – a guy that you can rely on to go kind of create his own shot? Is he someone that can maybe get to the point where he is a uh, like a Jalen Brown kind of a player? Or are we talking about someone that's more of like a strictly 3 and D guy? You know what I mean? Well, in today's game right now, he projects as a 3 and D guy because while he did show the ability to get somewhere off the bounce, most of the time he was scoring over players that were much smaller. If you look at back against their game against Arkansas, in their game against Arkansas, he was scoring over Chris Likes with a couple of dribble moves to the mid-range. He wasn't scoring over top of great athletes off the bounce. Now, does he show some wiggle? Sure, but like you said, I, I think the injuries held him back a little bit, so you're kind of venturing into the unknown if you talk about what he can create off the bounce. Another thing, too, is I think he's a fine athlete. I don't know that he's one of these – difference making athletes he's strong he's physical he's going to be quick laterally on the floor but as far as exploding up and over top of people i'm not sure he's one of those guys he keeps the game easy and that's one of the reasons he's been successful he doesn't overdo some things but he needs to be the third option i think third fourth option he's not going to be somebody who's going to create something for you i think there's going to be a couple of seasons where he can be really good uh, he's drawn some comparisons, and I'm not sure if you're going to like this one or not, Rob, but I'm going to compare him to a former Dookie, too. Uh, Corey Maggette, big, strong guard with length, can, string, can guard in the post, can guard out on the perimeter. He's going to have some big scoring years because he's got tools. I'm just interested to see 
how it goes with today's game, how he's going to be able to create some with more space in the NBA. I just don't know that he has that burst to get somebody on his back to get all the way to the rim. So as of right now, I would put him beside somebody. Like I saw the, the Pelicans were projected as somebody somewhere he could arrive. Somebody beside a Brandon Ingram, somebody beside a Zion Williamson, because of his inability to get somewhere off the bounce, let somebody else do that stuff for you. And you could average 12 a game, knocking down open shots and playing off one dribble, which are two things that he's very good at. Yeah, I, I, I so I agree with everything that you just said right there. I, I just think that he has more potential as someone that's kind of like an isolation, created himself kind of a guy. He's also the youngest player projected to be drafted um, in, the, in the top 10. So there's definitely room for improvement. And I think the fact that he has... Uh, not played a ton of basketball over the course of the last three or four years is mm-hmm. something that um, kind of leads me to believe maybe he can get there. And, and uh, honestly, I want to see what his explosiveness is once he kind of gets a full off season of training instead of coming in um, after being hurt. Uh, here's my, here's my comparison. Actually, before we get into the comparisons, the other question I have is on the defensive end, where do you stand in, on him as a player? Because um, from people that I've talked to, some believe that he is, right now more of a potential great defender as opposed to being a great defender right now in this moment. He still kind of is figuring out positional things and and how to sit in a stance and how to keep a guy in front of him. I, I think he has the potential to be a great defender and a very switchable defender. One, because, I mean, if you see this young man up close, like his legs are tree trunks. He's going to mm-hmm. be able to guard taller than what he is, and it never hurts to have a seven-foot wingspan. I think he's going to be very switchable by the time everything's said and done. He's going to be a very quality defender. Now, is he going to be a you can't back him down to the post. defender? You I'm can't, sorry? You can't back him down to the post. No, but there's no, there's no back position. He's going to keep that position. Yeah. Do you wonder if he's quick enough laterally? I think that laterally, I think there's some concern there, but at the same time, we're, we're projecting at the top, at, you know, top 12 picks. I think he's somebody that could provide value because of his body size and because of his athleticism. I think he's somebody that's going to be able to guard, you know, two, three, four. Uh, ones I think will be too fast. Fives I think will be a little bit too big because in the NBA, these fives are huge and you can try to go small all you want. Look at what, uh, what's going on with the buck series right now. Like you can try to go small, but it's still going to make, it's still going to make it really difficult at times for you to be able to do that. And I, I think two through four is a legitimate ability of his. I just feel like right now guarding somebody out at the three point line and having to stay in front of some of these ultra quick guys could be an issue for him. Yeah, I think someone like a uh, a PJ Washington or a an Eric Pascal or a Draymond Green are the examples of the guys that can play small ball five as someone that is six six or six seven. And I don't think that AJ Griffin is one of the guys. That's, like he's a two through four um, uh, he guards twos guards big wings. I, I think mm-hmm. um, I think that's kind of what it is for him. You ready for my comparison for him? I'm ready. Is it Corey Maggette like? It, it it is not. I think Corey Maggette is the best case scenario if. Uh, I agree. I, I, don't, I don't hate it, but I think that like you, we need AJ. Griffin. I'm a big best case scenario guy in case you haven't figured that out over the course of a year. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm love, always thinking best case. I, I love I love the positivity. Um, mine is OG Ananobi, right? And I think that that is still a relatively bullish comparison for him. Uh, I, I didn't realize this until I looked it up. OG averaged 18 points a game this year. Mm-hmm. Very good. About player. 36% from three. Um, he's got a little bit of a longer wingspan. He's a little bit bigger. Um, so I think that he that shoots be- AJ shoots the ball much better coming out of college than what OG did coming out yep. of Indiana. Right. Yep. Like, I mean, so I think I- that the percentage points are significant. Yeah. So I, I think that AJ, it's not a, none of these are ever going to be perfect comparisons, but I do think that a guy that can attack closeouts, that is going to be switchable defensively, that is going to be able to um, allow you to do different things by creating space and by being able to guard different positions. That's kind of what I think he's, he's going to end up being in the league. I, I, I view him, like you said, as a number three guy, uh, as a rotational player, and as a, a really solid starter on a good basketball team. Do you remember Do you remember what OG's uh, comparison was coming out? Best case comparison? It was Kawhi. Was it, wasn't it, was it Kawhi like Kawhi Leonard? Yeah, Kawhi Leonard. I, yeah. I remember seeing a lot of like Trevor Ariza when mm-hmm. it came to him, something mm-hmm. like that, which, I'm, I'm again, outside, not, not including Kawhi, but that's a lot of what A.J. Griffin's comparison is going to end up being. I like that. Yep. All right. Well, listen, this was uh, the breakdown of Duke's AJ Griffin. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are going to be rolling out prospect previews for the 2022 NBA draft throughout the month of May.